Hey, what is up guys, Sam here, and welcome back to episode five of the Discord bot coding series. This series is brought to you by Salad. Salad is a cryptocurrency miner that lets you easily earn money when you're not using your computer. Salad is partnered with Discord and all of Salad's code is open source. You can use Salad to redeem rewards like Discord Nitro, Amazon gift cards, and so much more. Offer walls are an easy way to chop some Salad balance without needing to worry about a powerful GPU. Just head on over to the Offer Walls page and click on an offer that looks good to you, then build up that balance. Now Salad have given us a special code just for our audience to use. If you use code TDE, you will earn two times the earnings on your Salad account and get that gift card before anyone else. Check out Salad today at the link below. Today we're going to be adding some general moderation features, but also a welcome message to our bot so you can greet members when they join. So let's firstly begin with the welcome message. So we're going to be utilizing the same dot on function again. So we're going to be using events, but this time we're going to use guild member add. So this means when a guild member joins the server and this outputs the member uh, variable which you're going to be able to use to access the member who joined the server such as member.user.username or things like that so let's just uh, send the member a dm firstly member.send so to send them a dm is saying welcome to the server so if we restart the bot and try that i'm going to go ahead and join from my other account and you will see, I got a DM for tutorial bot saying welcome to the server. So we can see our welcome message works, but how can we make it look better? So what I would recommend is using something called an embedded message. An example of an embedded message would be this one on our server. So you see we have a title, a description, a picture here, a color there. So it lets you have uh, more information displayed in a much nicer way than just plain text. So let's begin with our first embed. So the defining an embed is extremely simple. All you have to do is do let embed or whatever name you want here. I'm just calling it embed for simplicity equals new discord.message embed. So again, using discord, the library at the very top of our code and make sure you do not end this line with a semicolon. What we're going to do is go under this line and do dot set title and we can set the title here. So let's say welcome to my server set we can do set description uh, thank you for joining my server make sure to stay active and talk to the other members then we can set a color dot set color and here you want to put a hex code if you don't know a hex code uh, you can head to a hex color picker in Google and just uh, add to the hex color picker online and then just take one from here so I'm just going to go with shadow, why not? So I'm going to take this value here. Uh, whenever you're looking, if you're on a different website, make sure you copy the value with a hashtag at the start. Paste it in here. And then I'm going to do dot set thumbnail. Thumbnail is that small picture you saw on the right. So I'm just going to set this as, let's say, the user's picture. So member dot user dot avatar URL. And remember, avatar URL is a method, so you'll have to finish it with two parentheses. Once you've done the last line, you can finish it off with the semicolon. So basically it's starting up here and then basically you're adding to it, adding to it, adding, it, adding to it, and then stopping it here. And then we're just going to send this to the user. So member.send again, but instead of putting a string in, we're just going to say embed. So if we restart now, and then I go ahead and rejoin, you'll see I've now gotten a DM from the bot saying, welcome to my server. Thank you for joining my server. Make sure to stay active and talk to other members. Now we can make this a bit more interesting since right now it's sort of slightly bland. So we can add some sort of stats into it. So we could do, for example, whenever you want to do a new line in any JavaScript string, you'll need to put uh, a backslash and an N. So that basically means go to a new line. So then we can do, for example, current members, current member count, let's say, and then do the dollar sign and curly brackets again. But whenever we do these, now remember, we'll need to change these to the grave key instead of quotation marks. And you'll see that will be syntax highlighted now in Visual Studio Code to show that it's not just text. And you can put in there a member.guild, which basically gets the guild they've just joined, dot member count. So even just adding that small change, we should now be able to see if I go ahead and rejoin again. You can see I now get current member count three. So now we know how many members are on the server whenever we join. So let's say you want to make it stand out a small bit more. 
we can go ahead and add formatting. If you have used Discord for a while, you probably already know about formatting, like two asterisks makes things bold, etc. So that's, we're just going to add some basic formatting to this here to make it look a bit nicer. And why don't we go ahead and add a, loon, a new line here and add something, for example, um, owner. And then let's, let's put the bold formatting visit again, owner. And then add in the uh, member.guild.owner.user. So owner is just a guild member object, such as like member. Owner is pretty much member, but it is the owner of the server owner dot uh, user dot tag. So let's put in their tag. So now if we reset this again, I'll be seeing now here. Thank you for joining my server. Make sure to stay active. Current member count three. Owner Sam Star hashtag six five twenty. So that is all correct. You can add as much information here as you want. There are other things you can add. I'll show you such as uh, dot set off. So you can do sorry dot set author. And set the author, for example, as uh, you can set the owner as the guild owner, for example. So I'll show you that member dot guild. So get the guild dot owner dot user dot tag. So that again just gets the members guild, and then that guild's owner, their user object, and then their tag from their user object, and then put a comma. And we can actually put in this is the one that you can actually put an image into. You can do this for the set author and the footer, which I'll show you in a second. Member dot guild dot owner dot user. So again, back to the owner's user object dot avatar URL. And then let's say we want to add a footer at the bottom of the message, we can do is a set footer. And then let's put the guild name, member.guild.name, and then the guild's uh, icon, member.guild.icon, oh, spelled member wrong, member.guild.icon URL. And remember, this is a method again, so you're going to need two parentheses at the end. So if we restart the bot, and I'll go ahead and rejoin here, we now have my profile picture, my name and tag at the top. Then we have the title here, description here, and then if the server actually had an icon, it would display down here beside bot development, which is just the name of the server. But since we don't, it's not displaying right now, but if you did, it would be down there. And then of course we have the user's um, image here, because that's my profile picture on this account. So you have a play around with the embeds and uh, see what you like, see what ones suit your server. You can, of course, do anything you want with any of these sections and add more from the uh, documentation anyway. So next it's time to move on to the moderation commands. So the two we're going to be adding in this video are ban and kick. So let's start off with kick. So we can just literally copy the format of another command and paste it in to start off, change the name to kick, and then remove the code in here we do not need. So we're going to be adding two ways to give the user to ban. Someone can either mention the user, such as at Sam, or someone can put the user's ID like that. So we're going to start the kick command off the same way we started the hello command off by using let member equal message dot mentions dot members dot first. But remember, this will only work if you mention the member in the message. So what we're going to need to do is add two pipe uh, keys, which basically means or. So if this is undefined, if this is nothing, if they haven't mentioned a user, then do this. So we're going to want to do message dot guild, so get the guild for the message, dot members, where this basically just gets all the members on the server, dot cache, so basically discord.js, the library you're using for this bot, has a caching system that stores all the members of a server inside of this collection basically, so make sure you do message dot guild dot members dot cache, which is basically the storage of all the members, dot get, so dot get will basically get a user by their ID, and just fill arg0 into here. So arg0 refers back to our main file, which is index.js, where we had here. Let args equal message array dot slice one. So it basically took our ban user reason. So it had ban user reason and just sliced off the first argument, making it user and reason. And remember, the first element in array is always zero. So we're now looking for if someone did ban, sorry, kick Sam. I'll put my just say an ID in here. It would basically go kick, and then it would remove the kick part of it, and all it would have left is this here, which it then uses as the first element. So now they have the member, we need to check, well, did they actually give A, an, a member at all, and B, do they give a valid member? So to do this, we need to put in if exclamation mark member. So that basically means the exclamation mark again, as we know, means if not, and it's saying if there's not a member. So if this doesn't work, and this doesn't work, then the user hasn't given a valid member. 
So we're just going to do return message.channel.send. And let's just say um, invalid member given. So now we have our, our fail safe in place to not get errors. So if there's no member, the bot will just stop there and not continue. So the next thing we're going to do is actually put a reason in because you might want to be able to keep track of why members were kicked. So we're going to basically, I'll go back to the main file here. We can see we have our args defined here, basically, which is just user reason. So we just want the reason. But the thing is, it's splitting up by every space, as we can see here. So all the reason will just be like this. So if we did kick Sam uh, breaking rules, it would be kick Sam breaking rules. So you can see if we were just if we just tried to get this part, if we just tried to change this to number two, which is the third element, we'd only get breaking, not breaking rules. So actually what we need to do is we need to take off these two elements here and then join these two together, which is extremely simple. So we're going to let reason equal args dot slice one so basically we're gonna we, since we've already taken since args has already taken into account taking this off we just have to remove the sam part of it or the user that you'll mention so we're going to take off these two by using the slice one because the kick is already gone and I'm, we're just slicing this other one off now so it's just going to say breaking rules so slice one dot join by space so basically this just means it will slice one of the elements away and it will as we split them by space here and turn them into a list, it's going to basically join them back by space again. So it will come out as a string that looks like this, breaking rules. So now we have our reason. We can do if no reason. And let's say we just want to have it um, no reason provided, for example. So we can just do reason equals no reason provided. So we don't need to put a let in here since reason's already been defined. We don't need to let again. We're just basically setting the value. So we can just do reason equals no reason provided. And then that will make, if there's no reason, it won't error out on you again. So here comes the fun bit now. We actually get to kick the member. So let's do member.kick and then fill the reason into here. And then finally, let's give them, let's give the user a message to confirm that the user's been kicked. So let's use message.channel.send again. We can use our grave key again here to be able to put the member's name in. Let's say member.user.tag. So let's put their tag in. Let's actually put this in bold as well by using the two asterisks we've been using for bolding. And let's do member has been kicked for, and then use the curly bracket and the dollar sign again to put in the reason. So again, as before, this is just using the variable member.user.tag, which will return the user's tag. And then the reason here is just the string up here that we either be no reason provided or what the user has put in. So saving this and restarting it. So if we head over to Discord now and we try exclamation mark kick at Sam, and let's say breaking rules. As you can see, Sam has been kicked for breaking rules. The bolding worked perfectly. And my main account has left the server. If we head to the audit logs, we'll see tutorial bot has kicked Sam with reason breaking rules. So let's move on to the ban command now. We can just pretty much copy and paste this. There's a few things we need to change. Change the name to ban. Change this has been banned for a reason. Change this now. On changing this, we're going to need to change uh, one other thing in here. So we ban, but we cannot put the reason here anymore. We're going to need to put reason colon reason. So inside of curly brackets, we need to basically put reason as its own field. So if we look at the docs here for the ban, we'll see options, which is see it's inside of curly brackets here. It's because we can also specify amount of days. Now the amount of days is how many days to delete the messages of the user. So number of days of messages to delete. So let's say the user's been spamming or something like that. You want to be able to make sure the messages are cleared up rather than you having to go and delete them all yourself. So I normally do day seven, which just clears up all the spam of the user for the past seven days, which normally covers all we need. Other than that, everything else should pretty much work the same. We can go ahead and restart the bot, head over onto Discord, and let's test it out. Ban at Sam. Uh, breaking rules. We'll see Sam has left the server. My main account has left. Audit logs. Tutorial bot banned Sam breaking rules. And we look at the bans. There it is. So these commands are going to need some fail safes now because currently any user can ban any member, which is obviously not something we want to happen. So if we head back to the code and we add in this line, if not message.member that has permission, let's say manage messages. 
return message.channel.send, you do not have permission to execute this command. So let me explain this real quick. We have this if not as normal. If not message.member has permission. So if the member does not have the permission, manage messages. So I'll show you over here the Discord permissions. Head over to permissions here. We can see these are all the different sides of permissions you can check for. And these are all the permissions that are allocated to a user with a role. So if we head over to roles here, we can see if we had a moderator role, they would probably have access to manage messages right here. So we basically want them to be able to ban, but not others. So we have if the person does not have managed messages, they're not able to ban. We can change this to any permission we want for any command. For example, if we wanted manage roles, for example, we can just change this to manage roles. And this will work the same as the other one, except it will check for manage roles instead of manage messages. So another failsafe we're going to need to add is checking if the member's highest role is higher than the staff member who's trying to ban them. So in the current state, a moderator could ban an admin, which we obviously don't want to happen. So we're going to add in if member.roles.highest. This basically gets the highest role the member has, dot position. Dot position refers to high, how high the role is on the list. So tutorial bot would be number one. Everyone would be the bottom. So if the member's highest role position is bigger than the person who sent the message, their highest role, dot position. So basically if member role's highest position is higher than the person, the message member who sent the message, their role's highest position, then return message.channel.send. You cannot ban someone with more power than you. So that will now protect against those two key fail safes. There are as many fail safes as you want to add, but these are the ones that you need to actually use the bot properly on the server. Otherwise, it would just be complete chaos. So we can basically copy these over for the ban command, for the uh, kick command. Except we have manage roles over here. And we'll just copy and paste this into here. This can be universally used in both these commands because it's just the same check. And that will now protect us for kick and ban. So that is all we're going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or join the Discord server in the description and ask us there. And I'll see you guys in the next video.